Hello, it's Steve again. Um, welcome to another one of my videos. In this video, I will be demonstrating how I've managed to take these seven buttons. They all do different tone, each one. Um, and I'm actually doing this down one data wire, um, an analog input, I should say. So as you see, I've got that plugged in through that yellow wire. I've got the other side of the pull down resistor plugged to ground as I've done in my previous videos to do with input pins. Um, also, I'm running a five volt wire through this red wire here, five volts to this rail here, which is powering up these seven um, orange wires. Each one of these orange wires is um, connected to one side of each one of these switches. As you can see, I'll just get my big fingers out of the way and show you this. So you can see here, I've got this connected. This side of the switch is isolated from that side of the switch until this is pushed. Uh, which then, as you know, makes a circuit, which then will connect to each one of these yellow wires respectively. Um, now the other end of each one of these yellow wires is connected, um, don't know if you can see that with this crappy camera, um, but I'll just focus that in on now. Um, each one of these resistors, including this blue one, the reason that one's blue is because I ran out of these ones, um, but trust me, they're all one one kilo ohm each. Um, this one here is a ten kilo ohm, which is the pull down resistor, as I mentioned um, just a little while before I came to the rest of this. Um, each one of these yellow wires, as you can see, uh, connects up to like on this one, you're connected to this one k this end which is then connected directly to the next one. They're all in series, all of these. The reason they're in a V formation, zigzag formation, is because, as you can probably see, it's only a small prototype board. And so I wouldn't be able to fit them all straight along that way. There'd be just no room. Um, but yeah, um, from here, you've got, so you've got your 10K and then you've got, six 1k resistors so along here you've got a six you've, at this pin you've got 16 kilo ohms um before but um if you add that one onto it but up to the yellow wire you've actually got six which then you use the pull down obviously as you know to keep that low until you get a voltage going into that pin so from here you get six kilo ohms so you'll get one one input from here one value going in and then as you get nearer the value gets higher the nearer you get to this yellow wire in regard to connecting these yellow wires up to each one of these resistors um now i hope that i've actually made that sort of clear enough as you know i'm not exactly that i'm not saying exactly that good at explaining this but just looking at it and if you actually look into the um, description in the video afterwards, you'll see the actual um, circuit diagram. And I've once again included the source code, or will be when I upload this video, the source code will be actually included in the description directly beneath the video itself. Right, over to the code. Right, in the code of... Um, yeah, I've, as you can see, I've um, named this first variable input and I've actually gave it the A0, which means analog pin zero, which, as you know, is this yellow one on the board, it'll actually state A0. I don't know if you can see that, but as I say, yet again, crappy camera. Uh, it's just a camera phone. Um, not going to say the name because it's an utter embarrassment. But yeah, uh, getting back to this code, 
as you can see, I've defined an input named A0, an output as 12, which is what the sounder is connected to. This yellow wire is pin 12, and then I've collected the black wire from this sounder to ground on this side. And just for the sheer hell of it, not necessary, but I've included an LED and tethered that to the built-in one on the board. Um, and as you can see in setup, I've set up the input as an input, output as an output, self-explanatory. Uh, ignore the serial begin, that was just me playing around. Um, if you was to actually open up, um, if I was to go back into here again, um, if I was to open up this part, um, go into tools, and then serial plotter, you'll get that up. And as I press each one of these, you'll get a square wave coming out, showing you sort of what, I assume they're voltages on that axis, and the bottom's obviously timelines. Um... But yeah, I'm just going to click that off because that's annoying me. Uh, now, the code itself is so simple. Um, as you can see, I've done the setup on this part. Um, as I said, it'll work without the serial begin. Obviously, if you take that out, you then got to get rid of this one. Serial print LN pin value. Um, yeah, but basically what this is going to do in the loop, I've defined a local variable pin value which then reads A0 and if that pin value is above zero I'll tell it to output a tone to that pin so it'll get the value into here and then that's obviously going to be pin 12 where it says output and then if you want, you could take the digital right out. If you don't want the LED to flash each time you press something on the board. Um, also, uh, um, other than that, when you let go of that that pin, and let go of, uh, don't let go of all the buttons, I should say, you will end up with no input. You will end up with zero or below. Um, I assume, assume this is zero, so... It's not above zero, so what will happen, it will go into this else part here. It will then switch off the tone output um, to that pin. It will switch off that pin and, and tell it not to give anything out. And also, it will tell the LED to switch off. But as you see, this is completely simple. Um, it took me, apart from the circuit, the program took me literally minutes to chug out. Um and the circuit itself, I'd say, when I was working out to save space on here, I'd say altogether this took maybe 10, 15 minutes to build. Um, but yeah, technically that's all there is to it. I mean, don't expect to play any anything good on it, unless, unless you want to go back into this part here. I suppose if you wanted to, you could come back into here and um, let's say if you want that to, if you want this to sound higher you could say go here uh, I'll give a bit of a space there for a sec um, what I'm going to do I'm going to multiply that by let's say 3 like just a round a uh, good number and I'm going to recompile that um, a bit long winded this thing let's go and wait for that little bar to go across Right, that's done. It is now done uploading. And as you'll probably hear now, the tones are a lot higher. Because obviously I'm getting bigger outputs. Now, I don't you noticed, when you're actually holding some of these down, you get like a sort of warbly effect on the sound. Now... From what I can tell, this has got nothing to do with bounce on any of the buttons because it does it no matter how hard you hold this down. 
So what I can actually only assume, because I'm running this board off of the PC's USB port, so I'm not only using it for data, I'm using it at the moment to power the board. Obviously, you could power it on your own. If you used to put 9 volt into this bit here, it will then regulate the correct this pin, this red one, back down to 5 volt. And it should, in theory, be a lot stabler with none of that sort of pitting on that sound. But that aside, I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a laugh. It's a fun little project for anyone that wants to learn how to send multiple buttons down one um, line. I suppose in theory, you could, if you didn't want to use it for sound, you could use it for encoding controls to actually do different things. But obviously, you'd need this to be very stable. So you'd have to use, instead of USB from the PC, you'd actually have to use a stabilised power supply or a battery maybe to keep like the values that come out the other end you know I was showing you that serial plot just now The well, if, in, if you need it a, a close tolerance you don't want that jittering around because like you'll end up with false pulses but as I say you could in theory encode it all to use different levels for different say actions you just got to program it to do that. Um, I'll probably at some point do that myself just to clarify what I'm actually rambling on about. Um, I mean, hopefully I'm not going too fast for you and hopefully I'm making a bit of sense here, but as, as I say, at one point I will um, have a go at seeing if I can actually get this to control something all down one line obviously the only thing it won't be able to do because it's on a on basically a, a resistance line is you won't be able to do two buttons at the same time because when you do you'll get basically the one closest to the to the final one so this one's actually this last button connects directly to the end of this 10k resistor and that's basically the lowest path of resistance it can get. So if you're holding down that, it don't matter what you do to the buttons before it, it will not change nothing. So don't expect it to um, be able to... It's not... I wouldn't call it an encoder. You're not encoding buttons here. All you're doing is, as I say, um, using a, resi a line of resistance along a path to find in the shortest path back to the pin um but yeah i hope i've made sense with that but as uh, as i said I'll, I'll go through this part again i mean like i'm gonna now remove this free again just to show how easy it is to revert back and i'm now gonna upload it to the arduino again um just waiting for that to finish and yep yeah, that's now done and as you can see now back to its old self right anyway that's the end of this video that's it for this video um i will be doing others as i say as and when i will be uploading so um basically stay tuned to this channel um and i hope you've gained something from this if you have a bonus if you haven't um like i say you got to start somewhere but other than that, thanks for watching and I'll be speaking to you lot again soon. Cheers. Catch you later.